Does anyone really like Riley? No. No, they don't. But the bony cunt keeps making videos, and that means I do too. In 2014, Laverne Cox said that misgendering trans people is an act of violence. Oh, well, if someone I've never even fucking heard of said it, then it must be true. Since then, she has repeated this statement multiple times, but some people still don't want to believe it. Yeah, maybe because they keep repeating themselves. You just said they came up with this bullshit in 2014. That means they haven't had a new argument in three fucking years. That sounds like someone's bullshitting to me. So I thought I'd explain why intentionally misgendering trans people is an act of violence and why you shouldn't do it. So you're gonna repeat it too then, yeah? No, I'm sure that'll make all the difference. I mean, they had a nice shiny stage and all that. Look at the lectern for fuck's sake. But no, I'm sure what people really need is someone who looks like a giraffe to say the same thing from his living room. So yeah, go ahead, Riley. Change the fucking world. But to get started, we need some definition. Oh my fuck, what is it with these cunts and definitions? I swear, they hide behind the dictionary like the fucking Catholics hide behind the Bible. Misgendering is the act of referring to someone by the wrong gender or implying that they are a gender that they are not. So if you call a boy she or refer to him as a girl, that's misgendering. Look, if you're going to explain the definition like your audience didn't understand it, then why use the definition in the first place? You explained the same thing twice, Riley. Is that the theme here? Repetition. You can misgender cis people or trans people, but it's particularly dehumanizing when done to trans people, and it's something that basically all trans people have to deal with at some point. Well then that's fine, isn't it? I mean, it's not specific to trans people, so what's the fucking issue? Of course, there are times when people intentionally misgender feminine cis boys or masculine cis girls as a way of trying to reinforce arbitrary gender roles. Are you sure though? You've got some dude sat in a pub having a pint of stout after a long day in the mine, and Shelley Harridan walks in. Do you think that guy is thinking, I'm gonna reinforce the arbitrary gender roles by calling this cunt a pansy fucker? Or is it more likely they're thinking, what the fuck is that? They look like a twat and I'm gonna tell them so. Not everything has an agenda, Riley. Sometimes people just don't like the look of you. And that's awful as well, but I'm mainly going to be discussing misgendering towards trans people in this video. Of course you are. You won't be touching on any other group of people besides your own, but you will be preaching to those other groups to behave in a certain way so your feels don't get hurt. You are right out of a textbook, Riley. I'm guessing you were breastfed until your adult teeth came through. Violence is a harder thing to define. Several dictionaries say that it involves the use of physical force, including the Merriam-Webster and Oxford dictionaries. But none of those definitions go with your narrative, so you won't be using them. The fact that you had to look in more than one dictionary shows that you are clutching at straws here, mate. However, dictionaries are not intended as all-knowing, unchangeable rulebooks. But you started with a fucking definition. This whole video is based on a single definition. Will you just pick a fucking argument and stick with it? They change and adapt over time as our usage changes. They are almost always descriptive rather than prescriptive nowadays. Oh, see, they don't make dictionaries like they used to, not nowadays. Are you an old man, Riley? And no matter how words change, you are not going to get misgendering defined as an act of fucking violence. We all know that's what you're after here, boy, so just get to the fucking point so we can all move on with our lives. Also, I typed up a script for this and was given unbelievable pleasure when the word misgender had one of those squiggly red lines under it. On my computer, at least, it's not a fucking word, so good luck redefining that one. I would argue that their definition of violence is outdated and doesn't encompass all of the forms of violence we recognize today. So you're actually saying the dictionary is wrong. Riley Dennis is more knowledgeable on the definitions of words than the fucking dictionary. Your ego is so fucking big, it's trying to squeeze its way out through your throat. And the World Health Organization agrees with me. In their 2002 World Report on Violence and Health, when you have to bring up a definition from the World Health Organization, you're on the back foot, Riley. No one's even debating with you. You're actually losing an argument to yourself. The WHO defined violence as the intentional use of physical force or power, threatened or actual, against oneself, another person, or against a group or community that either results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, maldevelopment, or deprivation. Your reading has really improved, Riley. I'm proud of you, dude. But notice the use of the word physical in there. At no point was the word verbal used. And no, there's no need to find the definitions of either of those words. This definition is purposefully broad. The WHO recognizes in their report that violence is culturally influenced and varies widely across the globe. And that's just perfect for your narrative, isn't it? A nice broad definition that can be taken any way you want. 
All of that trawling through dictionaries for a proper definition must seem like wasted time now, yeah? What some people see as violence, others may not. However, in an effort to fight violence worldwide, this is the definition that the WHO came up with, and it explicitly includes non-physical forms of violence. Does it, though? Let's take another look. Physical force or power. So it actually uses the word physical, but not non-physical. So it didn't say that at all, did it, Riley? You're sort of making that shit up, aren't you? And anyway, when those guys are talking about violence, I'm pretty sure they're on about actual bodily harm and the results thereof, not the effects of being called a boy or a girl. I think they have bigger fish to fry worldwide than your fucking feelings. You can't compare that with people being beaten and tortured. There's a guy with broken legs and one eye and you're stood next to him like, yeah, same mate, someone called me the wrong gender. Fucking asshole. They say physical force or power, and they note that power isn't necessarily physical. It includes all types of societal power imbalances. So it couldn't be physical force or physical power then? They didn't use the word again because they aren't as big on repetition as you are. If it were the way you think, wouldn't it have been power or physical force? You know, just basic sentence structure so no one gets confused? Well, I say no one, but look what's going on here. Plus, their definition states that violence doesn't have to result in physical injury or death. Instead, it can result and psychological harm. As a result of physical violence. And you would know that, Riley, if you spent a couple of days in the real world. But I'll tell you what, test it out for yourself. Walk into a police station and report the violent crime of being called a bad word. If they weren't laughing at the sight of you when you walked in, they sure as shit will be laughing when you walk out. Given that this is the definition that experts on the topic of violence have come up with, I would argue that it's a much better and more effective definition than the one currently listed in most dictionaries. And you can think that, Riley, but you're fucking wrong, mate. Dictionaries are books entirely devoted to the definitions of words. All the fucking words. The World Health Organization, as far as I know, works in a very different field. You don't get to pick and choose definitions, cockmonger. It either is or it isn't, and in this case, it really fucking isn't. Therefore, violence does include psychological violence, and misgendering a trans person is absolutely an act of psychological violence. That only makes sense when you apply your own fucked up logic to it, Riley. By that same logic, I could say any Beyonce poster is psychologically violent because I don't like her. What's happening here is people can say what the fuck they want and you're trying to make it a fucking crime. Getting the shit knocked out of you might give you a bit of perspective on the case of violence, mate, as it has done for all of us who aren't made of glass. If you still, for some reason, have a problem calling it violence, then call it aggression or abuse or whatever you want. Okay, cool. I'm gonna call it bullshit. The point is, it's a bad thing that we shouldn't do. And where were you when I I pulled that fat girl on New Year's Eve. I really could have done with hearing that then, Riley. Way to be tardy to the party, mate. Ask any trans person and they can tell you how awful being misgendered makes them feel. It's a way of invalidating their identity. It makes them feel disrespected, isolated, uncomfortable, and hated. And who gives a shit? Anyone can feel all those things without a word being said to them. So maybe stop putting so much stock into what people say to you and perhaps start living your own life instead of trying to control the lives of others, you fucking monstrosity. Simply because of their gender. It tells them that they should hide who they really are, that people will never fully accept them. Not if they're being whiny little bitches, no. Do you know why so many people like Blair White? It's not because she's a tranny, but because she talks about things other than being a fucking tranny. For her, it's not an issue. It's just the way things are. Plus, she is also one hell of a tranny, whereas you look like someone made a human out of the parts they had left over. Misgendering a trans person causes real psychological harm. And not only that, but it contributes to physical harm too. Lots of factors contribute to the extraordinarily high rates of suicide among transgender people. And the suicide rates amongst non-transgender people aren't exactly low. So from this information, we can tell some people kill themselves. Putting a transgender sticker on it doesn't make it a bigger issue than it actually is. It's a problem, yeah, but if someone wants to top themselves, there is generally very little you can do about it. Especially if they're doing it because people said mean things. That person was on their way out anyway. But misgendering is definitely one of them. According to the 2014 National Transgender Discrimination Survey, 4.6% of the US population reported that they have attempted suicide at some point in their life. And that is a wicked low number. Well done, America. While that number was about 41% for trans people. Do you mean actual trans people, though? Like those who have actually committed to it, taken hormones that have drastically changed their body. Or are you including the ones that just change their hair and dress in a different way? People like you, Riley, who are basically looking for attention. 
Because if you ask someone who wants attention whether or not they've ever attempted suicide, they will always say yes. However, studies show that having a supportive family, like people who don't misgender you, can greatly reduce that rate. You are implying that misgendering someone is the cause of high suicide rates. Does that seem right to you, Riley? Because if that is what you're saying, why don't we have high suicide rates in school kids? They get called names all the time. I guess they literally just carry on living. Seems a bit odd when school kids have thicker skin skin than an adult male, but there we go. The 2015 US transgender study found that the rate of suicide attempts for trans people with unsupported families was 54% while it was 37% for those with supportive families. How do you know, though? You can't ask them if their families were supportive because they're fucking dead. I guess you could send someone to gauge if their family was supportive, but if they sent someone like you to find out, Riley, that number would be 100% because you have the hardest time telling things apart. Plus, misgendering contributes to a culture where violence against trans people is terrifyingly prevalent. Yeah, it kind of is, but we have very different ideas of what violence is, don't we? You said yourself you think misgendering Misgendering someone is an act of violence. Words, Riley. You think fucking words equal violence. Your logic is so nebulous that anything could be construed as violence. You're the sort of cunt that sees someone smiling at you as sexual assault. You're Zana, Riley. I can think of no greater insult than that. A 2013 study by the National Coalition of Anti-Violence Programs found that trans people, and particularly trans women of color, were murdered at much higher rates than other LGBT plus people. Thank you! Now we're on to some real fucking violence. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Proper illegal shit. You can't put that in the same group as words. That's Division 1 against the Premier League, mate. Income fucking parable. Misgendering may not cause someone to go out and murder a trans person, but it does contribute to a culture in which hating and disrespecting trans people is the norm, which does allow some people to justify violence against trans people. Well, let them try. It doesn't matter. Violence against a person is illegal, no matter who that person is. Beating seven shades of long stringy shit out of a convicted paedophile is still illegal. However you look at it, misgendering trans people causes real harm. Well, maybe if you did a better job of looking like a woman, Riley, people would stop saying you're a bloke. In fact, if you actually committed to it, as others have, I'd be happy to refer to you as female. But you haven't, have you? You wear it like a fucking fashion accessory and you have the audacity to sit there and talk about trans transgender issues like it affects you. The reason why the rates of suicide are so high is because these people can't take it off like you do. It's who they are, which extends further than makeup and hair. You're a fucking fraud and a disgrace, Riley, but you've told yourself you're doing good so many times that you actually believe it. Oh shit, this is getting too serious. Uh, the cock goblin. And that applies to all trans people, not just the ones you like. Because there are some not so great trans people in this world, just as there are some not so great cis people. But everybody deserves to be gendered according to how they identify. No one deserves anything beyond basic human rights. And human rights doesn't tend to deal with things like misgendering because they're busy with all the torture and stuff. You think you've got it bad boyo? Fuck off to the Middle East. If you misgender someone just because you disagree with them, you're basically telling all the trans people around you that their humanity is conditional, and that the second you don't agree with them, their identity goes back to being invalid. Then stop putting your identity in the hands of other people, you dribbling fucking retard. See how much life improves then. There are so many ways you can insult someone without disrespecting all trans people. Agreed. And it was really difficult for me to do that during this video until I realized you are insulting to trans people. You're that white woman who said she was black so she could get a job teaching African studies or some shit like that. You aren't trans, Riley. You're a fucking head case. And I know that sometimes you'll misgender someone unintentionally. Maybe you didn't know their pronouns, or you just made a mistake. Well, too bad, because they're going to kill themselves anyway, right? That's fine. Just correct yourself, move on, and try not to do it again. You don't need to apologize profusely and make a huge deal out of it. But you gave the impression it's as damaging as punching them in the throat. Is there anything consistent about what you said? Say, Riley, do you watch your videos back before you post them? Do you fucking listen to yourself? Or do you just think, yeah, my Adam's Apple game is really on point in this one? That's probably drawing more unwanted attention to the situation anyway. If you want less attention, Riley, take the hormones and grow some tits. Commit! But once you know someone's gender, if you continue to misgender them, that's when you get into violent territory. Let's be fair, Riley. You haven't got a fucking clue what violent territory looks like. I can tell by your smug, shit-eating grin. That is not the face of someone who has been in a real altercation. But one day, 
It might be. Yes, it can be tricky to switch over to new pronouns or a new name for someone, but if you respect them or trans people at all, you need to do it. I've got mates that have asked me to put up a filter, and that's fine because they're my mates and I don't want to upset them. But that's not the issue here. Your video is about misgendering people being violence, and beyond saying it is, you have no real foundation. So you've just been chatting shit this whole time. And all of this includes non-binary people. If someone asks you to use they, them pronouns, just do it. Fucking no. Unless they're a good friend of mine, I am under no obligation to fuel their trivial little fashion statement. Non-binary is not the same as trans because trans is actually a thing, so shut the fuck up. If you need help accepting the validity of these pronouns, I've made an entire video on the subject. Now there's a fucking surprise. Not only does Riley represent all trans people, but he represents all non-binary people as well. Which is funny when you think about it, because you're not even trans, Riley. You're a fucking drag queen. But you should know that misgendering a non-binary person is just as hurtful as misgendering a binary trans person. Fine! Let them be hurt by it. The sun will still rise, people will still go to work, and public transport will still suck. Just get over yourself, little boy. Non-binary identities are valid as well. And if you need help accepting that, I also have a video on that topic that will be linked down below. Not in this fucking video, it won't. You can fuck off. So, intentionally misgendering trans people is an act of violence. It causes direct psychological harm and contributes to a culture where physical violence against trans people is commonplace. Alright, fuck it. Lump misgendering in with actual violence, Riley. And when you get assaulted for real, which with your preaching ass you can pretty much guarantee, it can go to court and the judge can say, but kicking you into unconsciousness is just as harmless as misgendering someone. Because it goes both ways, Riley. You want psychological harm? Get mugged, you entitled little prick. The solution is easy. Just don't misgender people and call out your friends or family if they misgender someone. I'm not doing your dirty work. Do it your fucking self. Rock up to someone in Weatherspoons and tell them they can't say what they just said, they will be more than happy to show you what real violence is. And that's not transphobia, because they would lamp fucking anyone who says that to them without prejudice. If anything, that is the purest form of inclusion. Something to think about, maybe. Thanks for watching, guys, and remember, if you want someone to change their mind, just repeat yourself over and over and over.